Welcome to Worship with Tibbetts United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sarah. Who are you? Esther. This is Esther, and this video is being recorded for Sunday, December 25th, Christmas Day, 2022. Ah. Esther and I are sitting here in our guest room, and as you can see, I am surrounded by laundry. Go ahead and pan around. I've got about, oh, maybe six baskets of laundry. I have some suitcases from some recent traveling that need to be unpacked. And I wanted to share this with you today because this is a room that I usually just keep the door closed and when people come over, I don't let them in. And the reason is because this is my mess and I don't want people to see my mess. I'm afraid that they'll judge me. I'm afraid that they'll think that I'm a failure. And so this is one of the things that I hide from people. But do you know what Christmas Day is all about? It's about God becoming human and entering into our mess. That's what God does through Jesus. God enters into our mess and sits with us in our mess. And so somewhere in all of this mess is hidden baby Jesus. Do you think we can find baby Jesus in this mess? Yeah. What do you think? Okay. We're going to see if we can find baby Jesus in this mess. Here we go. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Baby Jesus. I want you to remember this Christmas that whatever your mess is in life, God is there with you in the midst of it and loves you no matter what. What an amazing promise. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Do you remember baby Jesus' nickname? God with us. God with us. Emmanuel. God with us. The scripture reading this Christmas day it's from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through God, and without God, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in God was life. And the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, 
full of grace and truth. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Day, and Christmas is when God gets personal. I've been asking myself a lot lately, why? Why would God want to become human? I don't know about you, but my human experience this Advent season has been challenging, to say the least. I have faced so much death and loss, and that feeling of absolutely unfathomable helplessness. I'm pretty sure that I'm not alone in this. The month of December has just been difficult. I think the worst thing a human can experience, the deepest pain, comes from heartbreak. And heartbreak can be caused by a variety of circumstances, right? Usually heartbreak is coupled with some sort of loss. As I watch my daughter embrace the joy and excitement of the holiday season, I have to admit that I'm a little jealous of her. I'm jealous of her innocence, that she doesn't know how scary and horrific the world can be. I'm realizing that the innocence of our children has next to nothing to do with sin and everything to do with suffering. The innocence of children means that they have yet to experience the suffering and heartbreak of this world. They don't know how much pain is out there. When we watch our children lose their innocence as they discover that being human means feeling pain it is harrowing for us, harrowing for us when our children experience illness or get sick, when they experience loss, the death of a loved one. Watching our children learn about the suffering and heartbreak of being human is just hard. Why would God want to physically enter into our human experience when being human hurts so much? much. What God has been revealing to me these last few weeks and really this entire year is that the balm for my suffering, the medicine for a broken heart, is actually intimacy. It's closeness, closeness with my friends and family, closeness with my spouse and my daughter, closeness with my community, closeness with myself, closeness with God. I think God had to become human to show us how intimacy heals us, how closeness can bring joy in the midst of suffering. Sitting in our suffering with one another, allowing and honoring the time that it takes to truly grieve changing our minds, repentance, admitting we were wrong, and showing up for each other, for God, even showing up for ourselves. All of these are acts that draw us closer to each other, to God. I'm learning to be more comfortable with the vulnerability required to experience true intimacy. The truth is that being vulnerable, honestly, most of the time, it just sucks. It's terrifying to expose yourself to the world, to others, your deepest, darkest secrets and shame. When you are vulnerable, you expose yourself to the possibility of pain. And most of the time, we are just trying to protect ourselves from pain. But the truth is that in order to experience the depths of love and healing that are also a part of our human experience, we must be vulnerable. This is what God shows us. God demonstrates God's love for us in the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, a human. 
God shows us God's desire for intimacy with the ultimate act of entering into our human experience. Emmanuel, God with us, may it be so. Amen.